Welcome to Soul Food Salon. My name is Jeannie Rosner. Many of you know me. Let me I'm just going to do a brief introduction for those who don't know me. Um, I am the person in charge of Soul Food Salon. I'm a retired doctor, a retired anesthesiologist, and I now teach a lot of health and wellness events in our local community in the Bay Area. And I run this venture, Soul Food Salon, where we hold monthly events. Uh, they were historically in person, and now with uh, COVID, we're doing them by Zoom. And our goal is to educate and empower us all to be healthier. And we have a website, soulfoodsalon.com. Check it out. There's a lot of information there. Everything we've done in the past is there. And uh, just a wealth, plethora of information. So check it out. And I am very active on social media, mainly Instagram, some Facebook, and some YouTube. And everything is at Soul Food Salon, one word. So follow along to be inspired. I post really great recipes and just great um, health and wellness uh, insights and information. Every year we partner with a different nonprofit. And this year we are partnered with Off Their Plate, which was started in March of 2020 by a third year medical student at Harvard. She saw a need where the hospital employees uh, and the doctors, they were not being fed. The cafeterias were closing. And she also saw that the restaurants in her community were closing. And so she partnered the two together where the restaurant workers stayed employed and made meals and they were delivered to the hospital employees. And essentially $100 donation provides 10 meals to at need community, whether it be the um, hospital workers or uh, anybody in the at need area. And it keeps, and it employs three work hours for the restaurant workers. So right now we're partnered with them. So now they're present in nine cities. We've raised uh, from Soul Food Salon over $16,000, which is phenomenal. And as I mentioned, it's not just for healthcare workers now, it's now at need communities. So our effort is to help the Bay Area. And you can go to my website, soulfoodsalon.com. On the main page in the middle, there's a little bit about off their plate. There's a short video. And there's a specific link that was made specifically for Soul Food Salon for our donations. So please make a donation uh, if you feel so inclined. I'd appreciate it. Um, our next event is on Tuesday, February 9th, and it's with Dion Detras. She's a registered dietitian, and the, uh, the topic is nourishing your immune system. So today's event is virtual, as you can see. If you have any problems like audio visual wise, please put it in the chat box. I'll do my best to attend to any issues. I'm going to sign off in just a second, and Clea is going to take it away. Um, okay, so Clea Tierney is our presenter today. This is actually our sixth annual Renew, Recharge, Rejuvenate Soul Food Yoga Salon. And it's one of our very favorite fun salons. Uh, in the past, they were in person. Today, they're virtual, which is great. We, we're going to reach a broader audience. So Clea um, has a master's in education. She has additional certifications with the Yoga Alliance, Transform Coaching Academy and Mindful Schools Mindfulness Curriculum Training. She is a life coach, a yoga coach. She does private classes and private sessions. So you could reach out to her. All of her information will still be on my website. Again, soulfoodsalon.com. So as I said, today's event is being recorded and I will send the recording out probably tomorrow through the email master email list that I have from Soul Food Salon. So if you're not on that list, uh, you can go to my website, soulfoodsalon.com and a little uh, pop up at the top, you can enter your, your information and I will, you'll be on my email list. And if you choose not to be on the email list, no problem. It will be up on YouTube, again, under Soul Food Salon. So I'm gonna let Clea take it away. Welcome to our sixth annual salon. Um, this is really interesting to be doing this virtually. I'm actually teaching a bunch of classes virtually and it seems to work out pretty well. My mom, I think is out there in the audience, which is kind of exciting. Um, so welcome. Just a, a little bit of information. A yoga mat would be really great to have if you don't have a yoga mat, um, a comfortable carpet or a towel will work just fine. Um, if you have sensitive knees or have trouble being on your knees, we will be on our knees for a little bit of the practice. So maybe uh, an extra towel or a blanket, you can go get those now. 
you need no yoga experience at all. I will give opportunities to challenge yourself or to take it easy today. And since there's so many of you and I can't see any of you, um, we won't be doing anything where there's any risk of injury at all. Today is gonna be about um, stretch and a little bit of strength and creating space. Uh, and I don't know if anyone saw Jeannie's post yesterday on Instagram, but she gave a lovely quotation from Amy Holt that read, when the light comes from within, balance is inevitable. So we will be creating some space inside and, and around our bodies for light and space for balance. And of course, those of you that practice with me regularly have heard this many times, but balance poses are really lovely for our nervous system and down regulating and finding calm. So we'll try some balance today. So everybody should have their props by now. Find a comfortable seat. <clears throat> you can be kneeling or sitting, legs crossed or legs out in front of you. So gently close your eyes or have a soft gaze down and take a nice deep breath in through your nose, breathe out through your mouth. And again, um, we're sitting, eyes gently gazing down or eyes closed. And let's take a couple centering breaths. So you'll breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. Two or three more times. Just letting go of the morning, letting go of our to-do lists, letting go of any distractions, and just starting to journey inward, get centered, get present. And begin to notice in this opening meditation, places where you can find space. So space between the in-breath and the out-breath. So perhaps space at the top of the inhalation and at the bottom of the exhalation. If you deepen your breath, or take some belly breaths, you may notice space inside, in and around your side ribs, your belly, your heart space. And in our practice, we'll keep attending to those internal spaces. And we'll also notice when muscles begin to release, relax, connected tissue starts to stretch out and soften. There may be more space inside your body. There may be space in between the poses that you can land in. And when we create these spaces, we give ourselves place where we can find that renew and rejuvenate. So let's take about five more breaths. And then bring your palms together in front of your heart in namaste pose or a mudra called anjali anjali mudra or maybe palm to heart the other palm on top just connect with your heart in some way and if you're working with an intention here in the beginning of 2021 call that to mind or if you'd like to set one for your practice maybe it's to notice the spaces or to land your attention on your breath or to create some space in your mind as your thoughts begin to settle. Inhale and exhale, bow in to yourself in this pose of gratitude and acknowledgement of the light within. And 
then lift your head, open your eyes, release your hands, and we're gonna reach up on an inhale and flip your palms, reach down on an exhale. So just starting to actually bring space into our side body, stretch, exhale, release. One more time, inhale, reaching arms out and up. I'll try to remember to describe as best I can. <laughs> For those of you that can't see, and I'm really sorry, all the way down. Take your hands behind your back, interlace your fingers behind your back, and open your shoulders and your chest. Tuck your chin to your chest, and just feel your scapula come together across your back. Feel a stretch through different parts of your shoulders. And then inhale, take your chin to the left shoulder. Exhale, come down through the center and inhale over to the right. So keep your fingers interlaced behind your back as you come down across your chest, moving with your breath. Eyes open or eyes closed. One more time each side. And then lift your chin and drop your ear to your shoulder. And inhale center and drop your ear to your other shoulder. So starting to create some space through the sides of your neck, certainly in your chest, in around your heart. One more time each side, moving with your breath. And then release your hands and just take some shoulder shrugs. So let your shoulders come up towards your ears and down. Your arms can get really big here, bend elbows, or you can keep them small. So just move in a way that feels good right now. We're just warming up, we're stretching. And then go the other way. So some of you may have already been on your keyboards all morning this morning, working and zooming. And so these chest openers, heart openers, shoulder shrugs should feel really good. And then just shake it out. And we're gonna come to tabletop. So I'm gonna move to my mat now. <clears throat> so table, it's going to be knees underneath your hips. And again, place uh, some extra support under your knees if your knees are uncomfortable. Your wrists will be underneath your shoulders, about shoulder width apart. Then drop your belly, inhale, chin up, cow, cat pose. And then exhale, round your back, press into your palms, cat pose. So inhaling, shoulders back, gaze up. Exhaling, rounding your spine, really pressing into your palms all the way to the end of the exhale. If you'd like a little more movement here, you could tuck your toes and inhale, press back into dolphin. Then hanging table, drop your knees, exhale, close knee, child pose. So you inhale, come forward, exhale, go back. Inhale, come forward, exhale, go back. Or you're here in cat and cow, just inhaling, Exhaling, rounding. Two or three more times. Starting to warm up our spine. And then come to neutral. Extend your left leg out. So you could drop your leg and press into the ball of the left foot and just press back and enjoy that nice stretch. You can lift your leg up, drop your left hip down, round your back slightly. Or you could add balance to this pose and extend your right arm out. So if you're in extended arm and leg, reach into your fingertips, gaze down, press into the heel of the opposite foot, engage your core here. You might be right here, both hands down, pressing into the ball of your foot. You might have both hands down and just lifting the leg. Take another breath. Then bring your hands down, leg to the air, and move your leg off to the right. Press into the ball of the foot and lean to the left. So you're gonna feel a nice stretch through your left side body here. Gaze over the right shoulder. And you can move here a little bit. So sometimes it feels kind of nice to 
move around, <clears throat> shift back, shift forward, creating some space in your side body. Take three more breaths here. And then bring your torso to neutral, bring your left knee back underneath you and extend your right leg. So either drop the right hip down and press into the ball of the foot and just press the heel back or engage your core, lift the leg up in the air, press into the sole of the foot like you're pressing against a wall or extend your left hand out, right leg back, left leg, left hand out, gaze down. So any of those three options will work here. And notice if you're holding your breath. Find your breath. <sighs> One more cycle of breath. Then both hands underneath you, lift the right leg up and bring it over to the left side, press into the ball of the left foot lean to the right and feel the stretch. Feel the space between the ribs and the right side body. And maybe move a little bit. Take three breaths right here. And then bring your torso back. Bring your right knee underneath you. Set yourself up, knees under hips, tuck your toes, and we're gonna press back into downward facing dog. So just shift your hips back, lift your hips up in the air, and maybe walk your dog. So just bend one knee, bend the other knee. So if your wrists are uncomfortable, you can do this on your forearms. So you could come down onto your forearms, lift your knees and keep them bent, and be in more of a dolphin pose. If you're in full downward facing dog, start to bring your legs still. Reach your heels to the mat. Reach your chest for your quads. And release your head. So gently move your head side to side and up and down. There's probably a lot of space starting to be created in your mind right now. Very difficult to think when you're in downward facing dog. Take a nice deep breath in, and then exhale, lower to your knees, wide knees or knees together, toes cross, and sit back, child's pose. So hips are back on your heels, arms are relaxed. You could take your arms behind you and rest on the back of your hands, and let your shoulders disengage. And then take a couple breaths into your belly. So breathe in, fill your abdomen on the inhale. The belly's really gonna extend out, maybe even to your side ribs. And on the exhale, let the belly button come back to the spine. So this is a very calming breath practice, deep belly breathing. So breathing in, and notice if you're clenching your jaw, see where you can find some softness. So smile down the back. Relax your jaw. Notice the space in between the in-breath and the out-breath. And get ready to do some balance. Take one more breath. And then come on up, come back to the table. And we're gonna do thread the needle. So in thread the needle, you wanna make sure that your knees stay underneath your hips. If you get forward, you're gonna lose the uh, integrity of your core to keep you in the pose. Extend your left hand out, flip your right palm up and bring the right hand underneath the left armpit, resting on the right shoulder. So right here, you're in a twist. You've got acupressure on your shoulder. And here are some other options. You could take your left hand off the mat, reach behind and just open the shoulder. You're gonna add a little bit of balance when you do that. 
You already may have fallen out of this pose, and that's okay. Just come right back in. You may want to lift your left knee out and straighten your left leg. I always want to wave with my foot at the camera at this point. You can reach out and hold your toes, and now you're really using balance and core. Shine your light. So find your pose. You could rest your foot on the ground. Any variety, anything in this pose, all kinds of benefits are happening. And we're gonna stay here for five breaths. So relax the muscles of your face. If you fall out, just come right back in. When you have gotten to about five breaths, make sure you bring your left hand to the ground, left knee to the ground, and then press up. And we're gonna do a rebound pose. So I like to just circle around my knees. Some people like to do a cat and a cow. Just kind of move side to side. Some pose in between. And take a nice full breath in and out. Come back to table and we'll do the other side. So this side you may find a little easier since now you know where you're going. Right palm out, left palm comes underneath. I'm gonna shift so you can see. Knees underneath hips, rest on your left shoulder. And this feels really nice. This twist, this balance right here, or you can take your right hand off the mat. You can also reach your Right leg out onto the floor or up in the air. You can pull the toes. Five breaths. And just notice your knees connected with the earth or one knee, your shoulder. Enjoying that stretch, space in your mind, in between your thoughts. When you come to five, bring your hand to the ground for support, bring your knee to the ground for support, and press yourself up, and then take that rebound pose, either circling around your knees, or cat and cow. <clears throat> And then come back to table, wrists under shoulders, and we're gonna press back into down facing dog. So tuck your toes underneath you, press into your palms, lift your knees, shift your hips back, straighten your legs if you can, but we're just heading in this direction. They certainly don't need to be straight. Heels reach for the ground. And then bring your big toes to touch. So feet come in, toes touch. Lift your left leg up halfway, like we just did in tabletop. So imagine pressing into the wall, an imaginary wall behind you. Feel the stretch woo, to the back of your right leg. Look back and your core is gonna engage. And so we're gonna do, we have a couple different options here. You could stay here and then we'll switch legs. If you have a lot of energy today and you wanna do a little, get a little more heat, you'll come forward into Plank on one leg and press back into dog and do that a few times. So inhaling forward, exhaling back. Otherwise you're right here, bend your knee, bring your leg down, lift your right leg up. Same thing, so press into the sole of your foot, drop into the back of that left leg. Take a couple breaths. If you are still going plank dog, switch legs. If you're here, bring both feet down and come into child's pose. So knees wide, toes to touch, maybe release your hands. If you are on your left leg, so going forward plank dog, stay with that practice, we'll let you catch up. And if you're in child's pose, Maybe reach behind, release your shoulders. Enjoy some deep belly breathing. Relax 
relax your nervous system. Relax your jaw. Everybody meet in child's pose. So those of you that have more energy will just take one breath here and then bring your hands in front of you. Inhale yourself back to table. Exhale back to downward facing dog and then step your feet wide. So if you don't have a mat, to the edges of the towel or edges of your mat. Lift your heels, bend your knees, and walk your hands back in between your feet. So wide-legged, bent knee, forward fold. Let your head hang here. Move it gently side to side and up and down. So inversions are also very good for our nervous system. This is our version of the headstand today. Close your eyes, let your head get heavy, feel your shoulders move down toward the mat. If you want to create more weight, you can hold opposite elbows and hang. Take two full breaths. And then straighten your legs, come up halfway and bring your hands to your waist, elbows together across your back. Look straight down. Engage your core, so pull your abdominal muscles in and then come on up. <sighs> I'm going to switch levels. So it was not a sunny day, but now it is. <laughs> the sun is shining, so hopefully you guys can see me. If you can't see me anyway, it doesn't matter. So once you get standing, just shake it out. Just off gas some energy. Shake your legs one at a time. Shake your hands, maybe wiggle around. No one's in the room. They can see you, hopefully. Just shake. This is great for your nervous system. It feels really good. It's really silly. It's good for getting out of your comfort zone. So yeah, shake it out. <sighs> okay. And then come still. Feet underneath your hips. Palms in namaste. And either soft gaze or maybe close your eyes and see how you feel. And just as we did in the beginning, we'll inhale our arms up and look up. And exhale, press into your palms, arms down, look down. So inhale, reach out and up, looking up. Press down into the soles of your feet, let your weight drop as you exhale, arms down. And then one more time, inhale, arms up. Exhale, arms down. So if you know that you are off balance today for whatever reason, go find a wall to stand next to. Otherwise, shift your weight onto your right leg. So if you're next to a wall, you're holding onto it with your right hand. Right leg is straight and strong here. So tuck your pelvis slightly underneath you and then lift your left knee up. And we're going to reach under our hamstring of the left leg. So press the leg down into your arms. Open your chest and shoulders. Flex your foot. And then start to straighten your leg. So maybe you are going to do that about one inch. Or maybe you're here and you're working on balance. Maybe you're going to take it all the way. Some of you may even be able to reach your feet. Except for taking your hands from underneath your hamstring and reaching out and grabbing your feet. Everybody wave. Everybody smile. <laughs> Take a nice breath. And then bend the knee. Hold your shin with your left hand and open the knee out to the left. So re-straighten this right leg. If you like, you can open the right arm out to the side. Flex the left foot. Deep breath in, and then exhale the knee to the center, switch hands. So just take the right hand over the shin, left arm opens, come across your midline here. <sighs> Nervous system is down regulating right now. Inhale, 
exhale back to the center. And we're gonna come into tree pose. So you could reach down and hold your foot and just drop your knee with your foot at your quad. You could take your foot to your inner thigh, or you could take your foot down to your shin. Just don't press your foot against your knee. And then come into namaste pose. And then maybe reach up into full tree. Whatever form of tree works for you today. Soften your shoulders if your arms are up in the air. If you have trees to look at, challenge your balance by taking your gaze off the floor or off the screen and looking out the window. See what happens. This right leg is getting really strong. Okay, palms together and back into your center. So we're all in namaste pose right now. Take your left foot off and bring your foot behind you, knee to knee, reach back with your left hand and find your foot for a nice quadricep stretch. So if you have dancer's pose in your practice, you could do that now. Otherwise, bring your knees together, tuck your pelvis slightly, pull your heel toward your glute, maybe open your left shoulder, maybe reach up with this right hand or keep the right hand on your hip. Enjoy this stretch. Oh, it feels really nice on me today. Deep inhale and exhale, release and just shake it out. Okay. Everyone's light should really be shining because that was a lot of balance. Just shake it out and we'll do the other side. So you can turn around if you're at a wall or just move over to another wall. Otherwise, press your left foot into the ground, strong left leg. Right knee comes up, right hand's underneath right hamstring. Steady yourself with your gaze. So find a spot to stare at the floor. Just, you don't need to see the screen, just listen to my words here. Flex your right foot and start to straighten your leg. Just slightly maybe, or maybe all the way. Keep that left leg strong. Find your breath to steady yourself. Inhale, exhale, bend. Keep the knee up in the air. Hold your shin with your right hand. Extend your left arm out to the side and open the knee, knee out to the side, leg out to the side. <sighs> And come center, switch hands, bring that knee over your midline, maybe extend your right arm out or arms close into your body helps with balance too. The more extended, further away from your body, the more challenging the pose will be. And now come to center and reach down and find your foot and bring it into your favorite tree or release the foot to your shin, the side of your shin or even to the floor, your ankle. <sighs> hands to heart. If you feel really steady, hands up in the air. Find your favorite tree. <sighs> Soften somewhere. So working hard. Everybody's probably working really hard in this balance pose. See if you can find some ease. Maybe just smile. Breath. Move your shoulders down away from your ears. Hold the pose. Our strong left leg here is going to continue to get stronger. Release the right foot. Knee to knee. Reach behind and find the top of the right foot. And maybe do dancer's pose if that's in your practice. Or you can take your left hand to your waist and just pull the leg in open. That right shoulder out to the side. You can have your arm up in the air. I don't really work with idealized poses. I'm more like people who are practicing with me 
to find whatever form of the pose works for you and just do that. If you're feeling it, you're doing it. Take another breath and then gently release. Oh, and shake it out. Well done. All right, let's see what time it is. Gotta do warriors. Awesome. Okay, everybody take a nice wide stance. So if you were to open your arms up to the side, you can actually do this. I'm gonna do a nice star pose. Your ankles are sort of underneath where your wrists are. And this is warrior two arms right now. Arms are straight out, palms are face down. We're gonna spin the right foot forward. So come up on the heel of the right foot and then face the right foot toward, parallel toward the top of the mat and bend your right knee. So now we've come into warrior two pose. Look down the right hand, soften the shoulders and reach muscle energy into the arms. Again, make the pose work for you here. There's no perfect idealized way to do poses, at least when you're practicing with me. <sighs> Warrior, fierce, strong pose. But there's space, there's space inside, space with your breath, space in your thoughts. And now let's do Sun Warrior, a reverse warrior. Drop this back hand, reach back with this, oh, the sun. Rebend into your front knee and look up. So now we are really challenging our balance here. And I have actual literal light shining from the result of my balance. <laughs> Breathe. Come back to warrior two. Look back at your back hand and see if it's dropped down. Lift it so it's in the same plane. And then straighten your front leg, hands to waist. Face both feet in the same direction, and we'll do the other side. So just spin on the heel of the left foot, bend into the left leg. Be mindful of your knees here, so don't let your knees fall forward. Maybe you might need to even hold your knee out. Back leg is straight and strong, and reach your arms out. Look down that front hand. Take a couple breaths. Where are you working really hard that you could create a little ease, a little softness? Oftentimes I find it's in the jaw. Smile, release all those muscles of your face. Drop your back hand, reach your front hand up, come into reverse warrior or sun warrior. So if you're off balance, just bring your hand down or maybe look down at the floor. We're doing a lot of balance today, for sure. Jeannie, you set us up for that with our beautiful quotation yesterday. And your beautiful tree pose in nature. Loved it. Come back to warrior two. Hold warrior two. And then straighten your front leg. Face both of your feet in the same direction and bring your hands to your waist. This is the in-between pose the space in between, enjoy it. So we're gonna come down halfway. So if you have very tight hamstrings or bad low back, bring your heels a little closer together, feet, and bend your knees. Otherwise, straight legs come down just halfway. So your knees might be bent here. Come down halfway and bring your hands to the floor. If you have blocks, this is where yoga blocks are very, very helpful. Look down and imagine a piece of thread being pulled from the crown of your head, down your neck, down your spine, through your tailbone. They're in the same plane and you're going to glide side to side. So bend into the right knee. Inhale, center, start to bend the left knee and bend over to the left. So you're gliding side to side here. Some of you may want to come all the way down. Place your toes up in the air. Really get into your inner groins here. 
Gliding side to side. Scapula, shoulder blades come together, hands are wide. Use your breath. One more time each side until you're even. And then come to the center. Maybe heel toe your feet a little closer together to create a steady foundation. Take your hands to the waist, straighten your legs, same thing we did in the beginning, engage your core and come all the way up. And then step or jump your feet together. Lovely. Okay, come on down. We're gonna come all the way down to the floor to seat it. So if you have something to sit on, like a blanket or a block, it's very, very helpful. Um, it's very helpful to do that also in meditation. So if you have a block, you could just sit on top of a block, or if you have that extra blanket that was underneath your knees, you could sit on a blanket. And we're gonna come into dragonfly pose or straddle. So that's legs wide. So some of you, your legs are gonna be more like this, or your knees might even be bent. So find your form of dragonfly. Pull your belly button back toward your spine, round your back slightly and come forward. So that might be right here, chin to chest, head surrendered. For some of you, it might be all the way down onto the floor. Forearms on the floor you may be able to get your head down to the floor. So find the edge of your stretch. It's gonna be completely different for everybody and probably different on different days. So we are forward folding, stretching into the backs of our legs, into our inner groins, hips open, chin to chest, head surrendered, shoulders soft. Take a couple deep, full, long breaths here. Soften your jaw. Then gently walk over to the right side. So that may be like this, upright. Maybe you want to take this into a side stretch and reach your left arm up and over. Find your foot over your shoulder back. Let your right arm just rest from the inside of your leg. Maybe you're more interested in doing a deep forward fold where you grab your foot, release your forearms to either side of your shin, forehead to shin bone. Maybe you're right here in a nice twist. Let your shoulders surrender, soften, move down away from your ears. Breathing in, breathing out. Where is the space here? You may be feeling space starting to get created inside your body as your connective tissue fascia releases into the stretch. Yin yoga. Step in yin, we would hold it much longer. And right now we're gonna walk into the center. Take a breath in the center and then come over to the other side. So same pose on this side. So some of you are in a side stretch some of you are in a forward fold. Some of you are in a bit more of a twist. So find your pose. Some of us are admiring our self pedicure. Space is being created inside the body, in the pose. Where else can you make space? Two more breaths. And then come to center. Pull in your core, gently come up. And we're gonna rock back. So just rest on your hands behind you. Take your feet in front of you wide. And we'll do windshield wiper. So this should feel really nice in your low back and your hips after that pose. Just dropping your knees to one side, inhale to the center, exhale to the other side, you're just rounding. We'll probably do this on the mat as one of our rebound poses once we get to the floor. And that's coming. Time on the floor is coming. Yay. <laughs> okay. So those of you that need, want some core, you can do that any number of ways. 
You could come into boat pose if you know crack, if you know boat. You could uh, hold behind your hamstrings, round your back, and slowly roll down. You could straighten your legs into stack pose, roll and round, keeping the backs of your legs on the ground. Or you could just gently come all the way down to the floor and forget about using your core. You've done enough core. And once you get to the floor, bring the soles of your feet together, let your knees drop open wide, and reach your arms out to the side. And just feel yourself supported by the floor. The transition from kneeling, we were on our knees, and then we were standing at that level, and now we are all the way down the floor. Take a nice breath. And then bring your knees together. Cross your left leg over your right. So not on top of your knee, but sort of on more in your um, quad, where your quad reaches your knees. And we're opening the left hip. So you could just gently press on your upper thigh and the left side. You can lift the right leg, reach in between, flex both feet and pull towards you as you release your head, neck and shoulder onto the mat. You could bend this leg and pull over your shin, even more intense. Figure four pose or supine pigeon. Ah, close your eyes, maybe. Take a deep breath. It's an intense hip opener, but you can find some places to soften. And then hold the outer arch of that left foot, release your right foot to the ground if it's up in the air, and just take the foot out to the side, one-legged happy baby. So you're letting your knee come towards your armpit, left knee alongside your cage. Maybe you want to straighten your leg and take it into a different stretch here. Let's just let your right knee fall out to the side if you do that. Otherwise, stay right here. And then bring your knee in toward the center. Bring your left sole foot to the ground and then we'll do the other side. So cross the left ankle or the left quad and either gently press, feel a stretch in your um, glute, in your hip, or reach through or reach over your shin, whichever. Pose feels right, and where you can get to the edge of some stretch into this hip opening. Widen through your chest, lower your shoulders. Flex both feet. Flexing the foot, particularly um, that right foot, will help protect your right knee in this pose. And then pull the outer arch, the pinky to the side of the right foot, release your left foot to the ground, and then pull your knee alongside your rib cage, kind of towards your armpit. Take a full cycle of breath. Some of you want to straighten your leg here. Others are staying right here. Or you can come up into full happy baby, bring the other foot up. And maybe rock side to side. Or ecstatic baby, both legs straight, out to the side. It's one of my favorite names for pose, ecstatic baby. Feels kind of like a nice massage. If you rock side to side, you're also using your core to keep you in a pose. Two more breaths. And then you'll bring your feet to the ground and we'll do, let's do a nice mellow bridge. So move your feet back towards your glutes, reach down, maybe touch your heels with the tips of your fingers, shrug your shoulders up towards your ears and then down onto the mat, pull in your core, tuck your pelvis and lift your hips just slightly. So if you want to go into a big form of bridge, you could interlace your fingers underneath your back, come up onto your shoulders. A bigger, deeper back bend. So press into the soles of your 
feet. Release your glutes slightly. And then release your shoulders slowly lower down, upper back, mid back, low back. And you can either take a windshield wiper here, the same pose we did seated where we went side to side with our knees, or you could bring the soles of your feet together. Butterfly pose, bound angle, reach your arms out wide, or a bigger stretch would be reaching your arms overhead. And then bring your knees up and we'll do a twist. So extend your arms out to the side. And if you have a favorite form of twist, you wanna go into it, go right ahead. If you don't, then just follow my lead. Press into your feet, lift your hips off the mat and shift your hips over to the right as you drop your knees to the left. And when you do that, your hips will be stacked. You'll feel a nice uh, big twist through your entire torso Look over your right shoulder. Maybe close your eyes here. See if you can drop your right shoulder onto the mat. You want to extend this twist by straightening your top leg and reaching out for the floor you could. Natural detox twists, all of a wringing out of your internal organs. Really good for low back health. Wringing out, shaking out internally, whatever it is that does not serve us physically, emotionally. We'll take five more breaths. Enjoy the twist. When you get to your five breaths, before you come out of this twist, engage your core as you start to roll up, support your low back, and then just come into the rebound pose. Lift your hips, realign your neck and your tailbone. Maybe press your knees together and widen your feet to the edges of your mat and just let your back reset that way. Or some of you might like to come into kind of a big uh, flexion and, and roll, bring your knees in, bring your knees up, something in between the two poses. I like to just press my knees in, have my feet wide. It feels really nice on my low back. Take a couple of breaths and then heel toe your feet back together or bring them back to the mat. Press into the soles of your feet, shift your hips to the left, drop your knees to the right. Look over your left shoulder. You can extend your top leg or place a hand on your top leg or just let it rest. Soften your eyes or maybe close your eyes. And we'll take five breaths on this side. When you get to your five, you'll pull your core in, bring yourself out of the twist, and then choose a final pose before moving into Shavasana. So maybe bring your knees into your chest and wrap your arms over your shins, or maybe another windshield wiper, maybe just that pressing of the knees together, feet wide. So choose a rebound pose after both sides of the twist. Letting your organs realign themselves. And then you'll stretch out on the floor into Shavasana. If you have a sweatshirt or sweater or a blanket, you'll cool off quite a bit. So you wanna make sure you're covered. Make sure props or anything else is out of your way. Just let your legs straighten on the mat, heels apart, toes fall away from each other. Let your arms Float out from the side, your sides. And take a nice deep breath in. 
and exhale out of your mouth. And again. And start to settle. So lots of teachers say, see if you can make yourself five to 10% more comfortable in some way. So maybe that's taking a couple more deep breaths in through your nose, out through your mouth, or having some movement so that you can find 10% more comfort, move 10% more towards rest. And then find some stillness. Let your attention rest on your breath. We created a lot of space in the practice. Now during Shavasana, you can allow your thoughts to settle and find some mental space. And if that is not a possibility for you right now, see if you can just use a mantra like let go. Or as you're breathing, think the words inhale, exhale, or breathing in, breathing out. And you'll have the opportunity to practice mindful presence. Every time you notice distraction, just kindly, gently let your thoughts go. Come back to landing your attention on your breath. This is a reading called The Invitation by Araya Mountain Dreamer in a book I really love called Soul to Soul, which is compiled by a man named John Mundahl. The Invitation. It doesn't interest me what you do for a living. I wanna know what you ache for and if you dare to dream of meeting your heart's longing. It doesn't interest me how old you are I want to know if you will risk looking like a fool for love, for your dream, for the adventure of being alive. It doesn't interest me what planets are squaring your moon. I want to know if you have touched the center of your own sorrow, if you have been opened by life's betrayals or have become shriveled and closed from fear of further pain. I want to know if you can sit with pain, mine or your own, without moving to hide it or fade it or fix it. I want to know if you can be with joy, mine or your own, if you can dance with wildness and let the ecstasy fill you to the tips of your fingers and toes without cautioning us to be careful, to be realistic, to remember the limitations of being human. It doesn't interest me if the story you are telling me is true. I want to know if you can disappoint another to be true to yourself. If you can bear the accusation of betrayal and not betray your own soul. If you can be faithless and therefore trustworthy. I want to know if you can see beauty even when it's not pretty every day. And if you can source your own life from its presence. I want to know if you can live with failure, yours and mine, and still stand on the edge of the lake and shout to the silver of the full moon, yes. It doesn't interest me to know where you live or how much money you have. I want to know if you can get up after a night of grief and despair, weary and bruised to the bone, and do what needs to be done to feed the children. It doesn't interest me who you know or how you came to be here. I want to know if you will still stand in the center of the fire with me and not shrink back. It doesn't interest me where or what or with whom you have studied. I want to know what sustains you from the inside when all else falls away. I want to know if you can be alone with yourself and if you truly like the company you keep in the empty, still, spacious moments.
So allow about 10 more breaths. What is it like to focus only on this moment with the breath coming in and the breath going out? And when you get to your 10th breath, with as little effort, as much ease as you can, if you can with your eyes closed, just roll onto your favorite side. Rest on your side. If you set an intention at the beginning of your practice, bring that to mind now. If you joined us late, some of us are working with an intention for 2021, or perhaps your intention was just to stay in this practice for the entire time, or maybe to find some space or notice your breath, recall your intention or set one that you can take with you off the mat into the rest of the day, or maybe the week, this month, the entire year. And then in your own time, when you're ready, gently bring yourself to a comfortable seat and connect with your heart in some way, either in Namaste pose, Anjali Mudra, or palm over heart, palm over palm. And just feel the beat of your heart, the warmth of the palms touching each other or touching your chest. And from there, release your hands to your sides and reach out and up on an inhale, gathering in all the light and love we create and we practice together, sealing that with your palms and bringing that into your heart space, bowing in this pose of gratitude. The light in me honors the light in each of you. Namaste. So wonderful, so wonderful. Thank you, Jeannie. I hope you all enjoyed that. Um, you can access the video again, probably tomorrow. I will have it up on our YouTube channel. Again, Soul Food Salon, follow along. And you can go on my website, soulfoodsalon.com because all of Clea's contact information will be there for eternity. Um, <laughs> beautiful day. I hope you find some grounding in your life, some renewal, recharging, and some rejuvenation. Thank you again, Clea. Take care all.